This is a video guide about how to fix Netgear Wi-Fi products such as extenders or routers which have the blinking power LED boot up problem where all that happens when you switch the device on is the power LED blinks and then not much else happens. The first thing to do is to try powering on and off the device at the wall and also going through the conventional reset procedure with a pin. Although the fact that you are watching this video probably means that you've tried those and they didn't work. So the next thing to do is to reflash the firmware using TFTP. Netgear's support pages have the firmware available if you search for the model number and then look in downloads and then download the firmware file. If it comes in a zip format, you will then need to extract the zip format and inside is the firmware file, which is the larger sized one. After that, you then need to download TFTP, which I will put a link to in the description below. The next step is to connect your Netgear Wi-Fi product by ethernet cable to a computer or laptop and then power on the Netgear device. Now it is time to set up the computer to connect to the Netgear device in order to flash the firmware onto it. This is done through network connections which can be found by right clicking on the start button. And then we go into the ethernet menu because it's ethernet we're dealing with here and then press change adapter options and then find your ethernet adapter there double click on it then press properties find the internet protocol version 4 so tcp slash ipv4 press on that then properties again and now we need to set an ip address within the range of the netgear product and it's only one of two options or one of two schemes so all the ones that I've used use the 192.168.1 scheme so for example I would therefore stick an IP address in like this for example and then I can just stick that in there 192.168.1.1 if this doesn't work then you can swap out the one in the second last box to then be a zero. So for example, the IP address here will be 192.168.0.10 and the default gateway will be 192.168.0.1, for example. You might not actually need to fill in the default gateway, but I just do it by default and it's always worked whenever I've had to do it. And then you can close this by pressing OK, OK, close, and then disable the Wi-Fi adapter that you use to download the Netgear software. Finally, now that we've done all of that, we can flash the firmware onto the Netgear device using the TFTP client that we downloaded earlier. So if I just start the TFTP client here from my downloads folder, you may get a security warning and then run it anyway. And then in the server address, you then stick the IP address which will most likely be 192.168.1.1 but it may be 192.168.0.1 in terms of password it will either be fine with nothing or you might have to insert password or what is written on your Netgear product and then for the file you then just browse the location of the the firmware file within where you saved it, most likely your download folder, which is the bigger file there. And then you just press upgrade and then it will then flash it. And once it's done, it will show that it's done. And then it's just a case of waiting for the software to fully install on the device, which may take a few minutes and when it's complete the power LED and the Wi-Fi LEDs if present will turn solid green. At this point the unit can be powered off and then turned back on again 
where it might have kept the configuration that it had before in terms of like the extender settings or the access point settings or you may have to set it up again. Thank you for watching this video about reflashing the firmware onto Netgear Wi-Fi products. I have successfully followed this for reflashing the firmware onto the Netgear EX3700 access point slash extenders that were deployed in one of the houses that I lived in. If this doesn't work, or if you want further guidance, Netgear has a variety of written articles explaining how to do this, some of which may be more specific to the product that you are trying to reflash the firmware onto. I hope this helps and perhaps I'll see you on the next video.